Part 1. You are going to hear a conversation between a tutor and a student who has just completed an internship in glass making. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. So Sonia, I've had a chance to look through your report from your internship. Thank you for reading it. What did you think? I found it all very fascinating. Why did you decide to do your internship there? Well, I've always been curious about stained glass windows. You see them in churches and mosques, and I wanted to find out more about how to make things out of glass. So, you did your internship at a glassworks? Yes. The glassworks have two sides to their business. The industrial side, which makes glass for commercial customers, like offices and factories. And then there's the artisanal glassworks. I worked on the artisanal side. We made artistic glass for homes, including stained glass windows and other glass products, like mosaics and tableware. Pictures, cups, you know. Right. What did you find most interesting about working with glass? Hmm. What was surprising to me was that we used a lot of found glass. We'd get it from charity shops, from anywhere really. And then you would cut the glass into the shapes you'd need for your project. Of course, you could always melt it down, or you could make new glass. But working with found glass was really interesting. What was the process for this? For how to cut glass. I'm an expert at cutting glass by now. The best approach is to score it. You draw a line on the glass and then you break it along the line. The line is the score. You have to score it so you're sure to break it just as you meant to. Before you hear the rest of the recording, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 7 to 10. Does it make a difference how big the glass is before you break it? Like if you have a sheet of glass or smaller pieces? Sure. If you have a large sheet of glass, then the best option is a table break. You score the glass, then you basically break it along the edge of a table. You have to be really careful though. What if it's a smaller piece? For smaller pieces, the best thing is to use a knife or some pliers. It really depends on the size and shape of the piece you're starting with, and of course, what size and shape you want to end up with. You can get really specific. For instance, you could score the glass in the shape of a small crescent moon, and then use your knife to cut it out. Whatever you want, really. That sounds like it could be difficult. The most difficult approach is the third option, the tapping method. What you do is you score the glass, then you knock gently all along the full length of the line. You can use the ball end of your glass knife and you work down the line, tapping all the way. This causes tiny fractures inside the glass without actually breaking it. Then you fold along the line, holding both sides carefully if you do it right, this will break the glass exactly as scored. This method works best for curves, particularly when you want to cut curves into a larger sheet of glass. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now, let's turn to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a part of a radio broadcast about cooking a traditional recipe. First, you have some time to look at questions, 11 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions, 11 to 20. Welcome to In the Kitchen. Today we'll be continuing our weekly series on traditional foods from Eastern Europe, with a focus on Slovakia and the special homemade cheese called Sidik. That's spelled C-I-R-A-K. This cheese is traditionally made in the days before Easter, and served as part of an Easter breakfast. From about 1880 to 1920, about half a million Slovaks emigrated to the United States, settling in large numbers in Pennsylvania and Ohio. They brought their tradition of making this special Easter cheese, which was a way of keeping the customs of the old country alive in the new world. This particular recipe for Cedic was sent in by one of our listeners, Helen in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who says that she has fond memories of helping her grandmother make the cheese and serve it to the family when they got home from church on Easter morning. To make your Cedic, you will only need a few ingredients. Four cups of milk, 12 eggs and a teaspoon of salt. Pour the milk into a large mixing bowl, then place the bowl atop a saucepan that is about half filled with water. Next, you'll want to heat the saucepan over a low to medium flame so that the steam from the saucepan will warm the milk in the bowl. Now, be careful not to get the milk too hot. We don't want it to boil. Once the milk is warm, start cracking the eggs one at a time, stirring them into the milk. Helen says that it's essential to keep stirring as you add the eggs, otherwise they will scorch. After adding all the eggs, continue stirring until what you have in the bowl looks like scrambled eggs. The next step is to drain off the liquid. To do this, you need to pour the mixture into a cheesecloth bag, tie it off and hang it over the sink for an hour or two. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where can I get a cheesecloth bag? Helen reports that when her grandmother couldn't get a cheesecloth bag, she would use a pair of pantyhose, and they work just as well. For our British listeners, those are known as tights. Anyway, once you've drained the cheese in your cheesecloth, or pantyhose, or tights, you need to compress it to force out any remaining liquid. Put the cheese, still in the cheesecloth, under the flat side of a pan, such as a cast iron skillet, just like you are putting the skillet on the stove, but instead, put it on the cheese. Put a cooling rack on top of the skillet and place something heavy on top of the cooling rack. Helen recommends using several heavy cans on top of the cooling rack. This will distribute the weight onto the skillet and the skillet will press the last of the liquid out of the cheese. After two hours, you can remove the weight, the skillet and the cheesecloth. You will need to refrigerate the cheese overnight before it is ready to eat. You'll want to slice your Slovak cheese and serve it with horseradish sauce for an authentic and very traditional Easter treat. 
That is the end of part two. You now have some time to check your answers. Now, let's switch to part three. Part three. You are going to hear a conversation between a student advisor and two students, Wilson and Grace. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Thanks for coming along, Grace and Wilson. My name's John Gray, and I'm one of the study support advisors. As you are new students and have asked to discuss what we can do to help you with your study problems, I'd like first to outline the purposes and approach to learning support here at Broadway University. Then I'll ask each of you to describe the sort of issues you have and then say what we might offer you. Is that OK? Yes. That's fine. OK, let's start then. Well, basically our purpose at Student Support is to help students to become more independent. We do this by showing them effective strategies they can use, not by doing the studying for them. Another purpose is to help students to understand some of the cultural differences between their own culture and the cultural context here in this country. In that sense, we are encouraging students to make comparisons, but not to make judgments about them. I suppose a final purpose is to help students to build relationships inside our culture by encouraging them to relate openly to us. That's enough from me. Perhaps, Wilson, you could talk about the sort of uh, study problems you're having and I'll suggest some options. Well, my main problems at the moment seem to be connected with writing rather than lectures or seminars. OK. Could you say a little more about what your problems with writing are exactly? Well, I find I can't understand the assignment titles. They're often unclear to me. I mean, the central ideas or what is sort of underneath the title words then usually I can't find enough readings or make a good enough plan. Well, we have a special session that looks at essay planning in each academic area. You're in business, aren't you? So maybe you could come to the business essay session. Well, that would be great. Anything else about your writing? I find that the structuring of the essays I write is a real difficulty for me. My essays are always very disorganised. Well, on Tuesdays during each semester we have essay writing sessions and you can make an appointment with a tutor to discuss your essay draft. Would that be helpful? Yes, it sounds good. Before you hear the rest of the recording, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. What about you, Grace? Well, my problems are a bit different. I'm having great difficulty following the lectures in my nursing course. The lecturers seem to come from different countries and they talk really fast and are not always very clear. I can't keep up and I end up with very poor lecture notes. Have you tried recording the lectures? Yes, but I still can't understand them. It just wastes time. 
Well, you might try talking to your course coordinator to see if some of the lecture notes are in PowerPoint form, or whether the lecturers have notes they can give you. Or you might ask one of the local students to let you look at their notes and discuss the lecture with you. I'd be a bit embarrassed to ask the lecturer. Well, one of our support staff can contact the lecturer for you if you like to start with. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anything else that's a problem? Well, th this isn't really a study problem, but I'm finding that I'm not sleeping well. I'm sorry to hear that. Is there something you're worried about? I'm worried about the course. There's too much information to deal with. Also, I had an email from my parents recently saying that my grandmother is not well, and I'm worried about her. I feel I should go back to be with her. Sounds as though you need to talk to someone who can listen in more detail to this situation. We have some really good counsellors from different cultural backgrounds. I know you might not feel comfortable about this, but I could help you make a time today if you like.、I'm、not sure. It's all rather new. Okay. Why don't you think about it and come back to see me again this afternoon? Okay. Thanks. I'm so sorry to be a problem to you. You're not a problem at all, Grace. We're here to help. That is the end of part three. You now have some time to check your answers. Now let's turn to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a woman speaking to a group of people who are planning a village fete. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Thanks everyone for coming out tonight, despite it being so bright and pleasant out. And thank you for offering to help with running our village fete. We're only three days away from this year's fete, and hopefully the weather on the big day, Saturday the nineteenth, will be just as good as today. Currently, the forecast is calling for twenty-two degrees and plenty of sunshine. Let's hope that holds true. This year's village fete is in aid of repairing the roof in the village hall. We need to raise a total of four thousand pounds to pay for the roof repairs. That's our overall target. Last year, we sold four hundred tickets for adults at five pounds each, plus three hundred discounted tickets for children, students, and pensioners at two pounds fifty each. That comes to a total of two thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds from ticket sales alone. Assuming similar figures this year, we'll need to bring in a minimum of one thousand two hundred and fifty pounds from the games and food sales to hit our overall target. Once again, we'll hold the village fete in Riverside Park. You've all got a copy of the map of the park. Let's take a moment to explain the key locations for the fete. Entering from the car park, you'll take the path to the left, leading towards the memorial gardens. Before you reach the gardens, you'll come to the raffle. This will allow us to sell a lot of raffle tickets. Going on from the raffle, directly across from the memorial gardens, is where we'll have the jam tasting. Our local jam makers have agreed to donate ten percent of their sales at the fete, so that will help us reach our goal. Moving on from the jam tasting, as you come to the river, you'll find the face painting. We expect every child under the age of ten to get their faces painted, but this activity is for children only. On the other side of the park, past the pond, we'll set up the band straight right on the edge of the river. Several great local bands have agreed to perform for free, so we'll have great tunes throughout the day. Next to the bandstand, heading back towards the car park, we'll have the drink stand. 
This will be right next to the kids' games, so we'll be able to sell drinks to those enjoying the music, and any parents and little ones who work up a thirst at the games. Again, all the kids' games are only for children. The exception is the egg and spoon race, which will be repeated at intervals throughout the day, so everyone can compete. The races will take place between the kids' games and the car park. Unfortunately, we've had to discontinue the three-legged race for legal reasons. There were far too many injuries last year. That's why we're letting adults join in the egg and spoon race. It's two pounds per person, so we expect that will really help us hit our goal. In terms of the kids' games, there are quite a few: the balloon burst, the chocolate throw. And of course, the always popular ladder game, where players throw bean bags in between the rungs of a ladder laid out on the ground. At last year's fate, the chocolate throw was the best liked and most played of the kids' games, and we expect it to be the same again this year. The kids throw a penny, and it must land and stay on a chocolate bar. If it does, they win the chocolate. It's harder than it sounds. Last year, we charged fifty p per throw, and we made four hundred pounds from that game alone. That is the end of part four. You now have some time to check your answers.